Hi, this is Herb Shapiro with the Dr. Vax channel. And today we're going to talk about upgrades to my Ender 5 to allow me to print at higher temperatures. Currently, the only printer I have in my shop where I can print at temperatures above 250C because of safety requirements more than anything else is my Prusa i3 MK3 where I can safely print up to close to 300 degrees C. The Ender 5 is rated as a, with a top temperature of 250, maybe 260 degrees. And the reason for that is the architecture of the hot end. And we're going to talk about upgrades to the hot end, to the print surface, and also to the Bowden tube to allow us to push that temperature way up. So stay tuned and let's learn something together. One of the filaments that I really enjoy printing with is ColorFab XT. I enjoy using it because it produces both beautiful, beautiful prints and it also has a higher glass transition point than traditional PLA. Traditional PLA starts to get soft at about 50 to 60 degrees Celsius. This filament has a glass transition point of 75 C, which is over 160 degrees Fahrenheit. So I can print something out of ColorFab XT I can put it into my car on a hot, sunny day, and I don't need to worry about it drooping and melting and getting soft. Likewise, I use it for areas where I'm going to create a functional part that might get warm. So the easy ABL sensor I have on this Ender 5 is printed in ColorFab XT, but I didn't print it on this Ender 5. I printed it on my Prusa. And the reason is it probably wouldn't have been safe to print it here because I printed at 260 to 270 degrees C on a heated bed of about 70 or 80 degrees C. Let me explain why. Take a look at this picture. The picture on the left is a typical Creality style hot end where the Bowden tube, the PFTE tube, goes all the way down into the heated area of the hot end. PFTE tubes that are made of a material that includes Teflon tend to give off fumes above about 150, 160 degrees. And therefore, it is really not a great idea to use a printer above those temperatures, which is why many of the consumer grade printers are rated with a maximum temperature of 250 degrees C. How can you resolve that? Well, look at the picture on the right. That's an all metal hot end. You'll see the PFTE tube still exists, but it doesn't go as close to the melt area. Matter of fact, it's above the heat break. Therefore, it won't get hot and it won't emit fumes. Now, a second thing you can do to improve your ability to print at high temperatures is use a higher quality Bowden tube. This tube, this PFTE tube from Capricorn is a higher quality material. It's more precise. It also has a higher temperature rating. And finally, the third thing I'm going to do to this printer is replace the print surface. The print surface on the Ender 5 or the Ender 3 Pro is a flexible magnetic print surface that sticks with magnets to the print base. I've replaced that with a Matter Hacker Layer Lock Spring Steel print surface. This is a textured material. It adheres and releases prints brilliantly. It's a wonderful material. Because it's metallic, it still adheres to the Ender 5 print surface. But if I'm raising the temperature of that print surface above about, let's say, 80 degrees, I can put binder clips on the edges 
to ensure that it won't come loose. Those three upgrades to my Ender 5 to allow it to print at higher temperatures, an all metal hot end, a new print surface, and a new Bowden tube. Let's look for a minute at the Micro Swiss hot end. It comes nicely packaged. The two major components are the hot end itself, the heater block, and in my case, it came with a wear resistant nozzle already installed. And then we have the heat break. And when assembled together, this is designed to be a plug replacement for a Creality style hot end. The instructions on the Micro Swiss website are brilliant. All you have to do is scan this QR code or just Google Micro Swiss hot end installation and they'll take you through it step by step. So I'm not going to take you through a step by step video on installing the hot end. Instead, I'm going to install it, but then I'm going to talk about the changes you need to make in your printer, in your printer calibration, and in your slicer, because you have a new hot end, you have a different Bowden tube, you have a different print surface. So I'm going to go off camera now for a moment, install this hot end using the Micro Swiss video, and then we'll come back and look at some sample prints and the things you need to change after you install the hot end. Okay, I'm back. After following the steps on the Micro Swiss website, their YouTube video about installing the new all metal hot end, uh, the installation was very, very easy. The only thing that was a bit scary was that the wires to the thermistor are quite thin. And you have to be very, very careful when you're taking the heating element and the thermistor out of the existing heater block. So do that with some care. Don't over tighten things when you put it back together, but it went back together very easily. And I've succeeded in printing with ColorFab XT on an Ender 5. I printed this at 270 degrees Celsius with a 75 degree heated bed. I printed at 50 millimeters per second. I did take and increase the flow rate to 105% for the first layer and 102% afterwards. Um, that might need some fine tuning. And in fact, the temperature might need some fine tuning because there's a bit of stringing on here, more than I've seen on my Prusa and my Monoprice Ultimate 2, both direct extruder printers that I've used to print this particular filament before. So I might have to tune it a little bit, but overall this is quite a nice print. Very, very similar to the print off the Prusa with a bit of stringing and maybe not quite as sharp in the corners, but I think by getting the temperature right, I can correct for that. So I've succeeded in printing at over 250 degrees safely on my Ender 5. Now, what did I need to do to do that? First, just to play it safe, I did use binder clips to hold my Matter Hacker uh, layer lock print surface down. You have to be careful. If you put the binder clip over on this side here, the fan case might hit it. So I found these two locations work fine. I changed to a Capricorn Bowden tube. I did the installation, and then there are two steps. Because I've changed the print surface and both the nozzle and the hot end, I need to recalibrate the distance between the nozzle and the print surface. If this is a manually calibrated printer, you need to take your post-it note or piece of paper and go around and recalibrate that distance. Because I have an easy ABL on this printer, I needed to adjust my Z offset. I did that and I would fine tune with a manual setup also. I did that by printing a calibration print and you'll see some videos I'll reference here about how I do that on my printers. On the Ender 5, 
when you're printing a calibration print, because these knobs are so easy to get to, you can make minor adjustments while you're printing. Remember, when you tighten the spring, you turn to the clockwise direction, you'll pull the bed down. When you loosen the spring, you turn to the counterclockwise direction, you'll move the bed up. Now, the other thing you'll have to do is you have to recalibrate the temperature controls in your printer because you have a new heater block, you have a different type of nozzle, and that is your PID algorithm. Now, PID stands for, and I always forget this, so I wrote it down, Proportional Integral Derivative. What does that mean? Well, when you're setting the temperature on the hot end, you would think you just turn the power on until you get to the right temperature, then you turn the power off, and when it goes a little bit below, you turn the power back on. The problem is that your heating element, in essence, is storing heat. It doesn't go on and off like a flame. It's like an electric stovetop. It stays hot. So you'd end up overshooting and then undershooting on the way down. So there's a fancy mathematical algorithm, this algorithm called proportional integral derivative that is used to control that. And you need to set that. Fortunately, in modern firmware, and modern Marlin firmware, there's a command that you send via G code to your printer that will test your printer a number of times and determine the right way to tune the algorithm. So let's look at our screen and I'm going to show you how to do that. The Matter Hacker Matter Control Program is a modeling program, a slicing program, and a terminal interface. It can be used to connect to a 3D printer and send G code to that printer live. So it's a very easy way to control a printer directly from a USB cable. I've connected the Ender 5 to Matter Control because I'm going to use it via the terminal interface to manually send G code commands to this printer so I can calibrate the PID algorithm. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to issue a command to see what the existing settings are. So I type M503 in and I hit return. And we'll see that currently um, the PID settings are a P value of 29.47, an I value and a D value. Those are the parameters for the algorithm. I need to determine with this new hot end what the right parameters should be, because those are the parameters that were in the EEPROM stored in the printer. So to do that, I'm going to issue an M303 command, and you'll see that auto-tune has started, and now we'll see the temperature start to go up. So what auto-tune is going to do is it's going to raise the temperature to a preset level. I think the default is 150 C. And then it's going to turn off the power to the heating coil and see how much it overshoots. Then it's going to let it go down. It's going to turn the power on. It's going to see how long it takes to get back up. And it's going to use that to tune these parameters. Once I have those parameters, I will enter them back into the EEPROM. I'll save them with an M500 command. And then I will have tuned the, the distance of my print bed for the new nozzle, hot end, and print surface, and the temperature characteristics of my extruder. So you'll see now that it's gotten to 150, and it's letting it cool off a little bit. Now it's going back up again, and it's going to cycle a number of times to calculate what those parameters are for the PID algorithm. Okay, this is finished. And I see I now have P, I, and D values. So in order to store those in my, my machine, I enter M301, P, and 30.01, I, and 3.21, and D, a 70.06. And then I hit an Enter key. Now, if I'm ready to store those to my printer, I hit an M500, and you'll see those have now been set in the EEPROM.
Okay, let me summarize what we've learned today. We've learned that you can upgrade an Ender 5 to print at higher temperatures. Now, in the firmware that I have on this Ender 5, there's a maximum temperature of 275 degrees. That limit might be set because of the characteristics of the thermistor that may not be able to measure temperatures higher than that. But moving from 250 to 275 and being able to safely print is a significant difference. It allowed me to print a wonderful Color Fab XT Snowflake, um, and it will give me more flexibility in the materials I can use. What are the things I did? I replaced the print surface, both because I really like the Layer Lock Matter Hacker's print surface, and because I can use binder clips with it successfully in the event that I need a higher temperature bed. I replaced the Bowden tube with Capricorn. Some people think that Capricorn is hype. I actually find my prints print better when I use Capricorn Bowden tubes. I do believe the precision uh, is a bit better. I believe it's a slippery, more slippery material. Um, and it works well for me. And then the third thing is I installed a Micro Swiss all metal hot end. I then recalibrated the distance between my nozzle and my bed. I recalibrated the PID algorithm on my printer, and I'm going to need to fine tune some of the other slicer settings, such as retraction and temperature for this new setup. So folks, I hope you learned something today. If you did, give me a thumbs up. More importantly, share this video with everyone you know, uh, because I'm in the business of just helping people learn. And also leave comments, things you like, things you didn't like, things you think I got right, things you think I got wrong, because that's how we're going to continue to learn together.